Dr. Seema Pehar, <coughs> my co-panelists, uh, distinguished members of the audience. Uh, I'm reminded of an incident some years ago. I was working on my internet and it was giving me some problem. And I rang up the help desk and the person was going too fast for me. And I couldn't keep up with his instructions. So I told him, wait, hold on. Just think that I'm a child and then start with your instructions. His response was, OK, son, put, uh, put your mommy on the line and then I'll proceed. <laughs> it is rather ironical that a person from the bullock cart age is trying to talk about the space age and that too to such a distinguished audience. To compound the matter further, that person is an illiterate Fauji. Anyhow, be that as it may, I'll try to deal with this topic and cover, since time is that premium here, number of speakers are there online, uh, in, in, uh, on the panel, and uh, there are some of them very, very eminent. I have great regard for them, having known them earlier. So I'll try to keep it as short as possible. I'll try to cover three main aspects. One is, what is the environment going to be like in our campuses in the near future? Second is, how is it going to impact the classrooms? And what could happen there? And third, being from the army, I cannot forget the human angle as to how to integrate the human angle with this campus environment and the classroom environment. I would like to say that today's campus environment, the people who are there in the campus, uh, or those who are going to be there in the near future, are something like the nomads. If you see a nomad camp, everybody has got his own type of equipment. They, he's working independently. He's working for himself. But overall, he's bound by one common ethos. Same thing is happening in our campuses now. We have a community of users. Each one of them has got his own type of gadget, which he feels should work on the campus's information system. So therefore, this community of users is in charge of, have rather taken charge of how, when, and to what they want to be connected. They are dictating the scene. And this is the, uh, the consequence of a multi of the devices that have hit the market in the electronic market and also the advent of the internet which is hastening the matters further. Some of these change agents which are there are multifunction cell phones, personal digital assistance, personal wireless networks, voice over internet protocol, digital video capture and editing, wireless data cards and more than that the need to remotely access all campus software and services electronically. We are no longer into that era where one could sit in front of a desktop or go to a kiosk and could retrieve the data or could access the uh, campus information system. The change, change in the locus of control of the IT has been brought out by the, brought about by the internet. And the emphasis today totally is on mobilization. And it has been brought about by the consumer electronics market. If you go to the market today and compare it with what was happening about five years ago or six years ago, the number of electronic stores dealing with computer-related equipment is just mushrooming. And they are selling all types of gadgets. With the result, the consumers go there, 
they purchase those device, devices based on their fancy, what they like. And they expect these to be supported by the campus IT infrastructure. Before buying it, they don't carry, uh, carry out a check whether it is compatible with the campus IT infrastructure or not. They expect the campus IT infrastructure to be flexible enough to support those gadgets. The problem starts that at that stage because most of these devices are from a variety of manufacturers with several different operating systems and application suites. And the campus information system, therefore, has to be flexible enough to ensure that they cater to the needs of these, this type of clientele. This affects your already stressed budget because more and more number of devices are to be linked to your campus network. And with the limited manpower, the budgets are, after all, limited. You don't have that much of money. And as it is, the IT budget always is uh, running short of funds. So what is required to be done is that we need to support the proliferation of devices enabling end users to access the programs and meet their computational and communication needs from wherever and whenever they want. The system has to be transparent, integrated, convenient, and adaptive to the environment. Then the area of concern in such an environment will be that of controlling these people who are hooking onto the network and also the, the issues related to the security of the network, security of the information which you are hosting on the network. Another factor which is affecting this environment is the entertainment industry. Most of the gadgets which are coming in into the campus today are the products of the entertainment industry, the iPods, the other audiovisual devices which are there. They are initially launched in the entertainment industry. People buy those and then as the developments take place, they get the capability to get connected to the internet and then people want them to be compatible with the campus infrastructure. Therefore, with these devices, mobility and personal, personalization will be the two key characteristics for any new generation system that is going to be installed in a campus. With the result, you will shift from an environment where the system was always on to a system which is always on the consumer. More than that, the demand pull rather than the provider push will have the large impact on the future systems. Earlier it was the student or the faculty would say, how good is the university or how well can the university support the facilities that it has created. Today, the environment will be, does the university have an information system which can meet my personal needs? So this will be the environment which will be there in the campus. And we have to cater for this type of uh, flexibility to ensure that the aspirations of the student community, the teachers, or rather all stakeholders are met. If that be the campus environment, then what happens in the classrooms? We need to have students participa participating in knowledge construction and in assessment of their own learning. Basically, oh, she says, I should try to be brief. Uh, basically, I would like to say then, therefore, is that what we will need is uh, we'll have to rely on modeling and simulation techniques. Different types of techniques are available as far as modeling and simulation are concerned. You could have dummy simulation, you could have a dummy environment or a live environment, 
and similarly live or dummy participants. Keeping those in mind, depending upon your requirement, you will have to have the classroom working in such a way that the simulators and the models meet the requirement of learning process of the class. One point I would like to then talk about when I said that I, we would like to have is as to how to integrate the human beings into that, that is the teachers as well as the students. My experience of the academic world has been that our teachers who come there, they are not that tech savvy as compared to our students. Majority of them are able to teach computer science engineering related subjects. But when you ask them about certain questions related to the computer world, uh, they fumble. You ask them what is a spaghetti code and what is a clean code, they will not be able to answer. So much so that number of them haven't even heard of things like tablet PC or stylus. I'm not exaggerating. This is uh, my observations of having interacted with these type of uh, faculty members day in and day out. I'm not talking about for a moment the faculty members in IITs or other elite institutions. I'm talking about majority of the engineering colleges in the country. As far as our students are concerned, they are tech savvy, but they lack the motivational skills and aptitude for self-learning because any technology-driven or technology-enabled campus will most of the time uh, rely on uh, self-study uh, more than a teacher-centered study. And most of our students, coming since they come from an environment which is examination-centric, find it very, very difficult to adjust to this type of environment. I have attended a number of these seminars where we talk about digital uh, invasion of the campuses, etc. But very rarely do I hear somebody talk about how do we bring out that paradigm shift in the attitude of the students to uh, concentrate on learning rather than worry about what is going to be asked in the examination. I was once upon a time with a uh, distance learning programs, uh, rather controlling the distance learning programs of, various, uh, of a particular university, and I carried out a survey. We used to have VSAT technology to uh, broadcast the lectures, and I found that the attendance over there was just about 1% or less than that of the students enrolled for various programs. If that be the case, how can we bring about a change in the motivation levels and the attitude of the students to ensure that they concentrate more on the learning process. So these are, there are the total three different aspects which we have to deal with. One is that the environment is going to be such that it's going to be flexible. We have to make sure that we are ready to pr promote that or support that flexibility. The, we have to rely more and more on simulators and model, uh, models. And thirdly, we have to ensure that our student community and the teachers are motivated enough and they adopt a learning-centric approach. Thank you.